Hey guys, uh, welcome. Uh, problem nine here, and this one isn't too bad. And um, yeah, so uh, sometimes when you have very little to go off of, um, adding more stuff uh, could be helpful, like more to the integrand that is. Cause like here, like use substitution does not help, right? Like, so like maybe like um, we instinctively like wanna turn this into like a cosine uh, squared. And how can we turn this into a cosine squared? Well we'd require that we multiply the denominator by um, one um, minus sine x, right? Um, and I need like an extra set of parentheses here, pair of parentheses right there, yeah? Um, okay, okay. But yeah, like I can't just multiply the denominator by one minus sine x. I have to now multiply the numerator also by one minus sine x, right? That way I will have multiplied by one. So one minus sine x here, and this is going to um, find us a way home. Uh, in other words, we can solve it now from here. Because now in the numerator, we'll have um, 1 minus sine x. Um, and I'll write the argument of sine without parentheses. Yeah, 1 minus sine x. And then in the denominator, we um, have um, 1 minus sine squared x. And I got there because I know that like, 1 plus a times 1 minus a is equal to uh, 1 minus a squared, right? It's just that a is sine x in this particular case of um, that, yeah? Okay, and this we call difference of squares, and I've said many times that it's like one of my favorite things, and as you see it, it comes up all the time, so no wonder um, that I like it, because like it's helpful in a lot of um, places in math. Anyway, anyway, uh, let's go. So where to from here? Well, you see that from the Pythagorean identity of trig, which is the fact that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, we know that 1 minus sine squared um, of x, right, 1 minus sine squared of x right there, we know that that's cosine squared x. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, replace this denominator with what it equals, uh, but simpler uh, and nicer, right? And that's cosine squared x I just said. OK, cool. All right. Now uh, we've got we've created some more freedom, right? Like because now like we can turn this into two integrals if we so choose, since we don't have any other um, better ideas. Let's um, over this difference, split this integral into two. So we could write that um, this integral is equal to uh, the integral of uh, 1 divided by um, cosine squared x dx, right? We can distribute this dx to this term and that term when we split it, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then, and then we have minus, uh, and I'm actually going to keep the minus inside of the integral, so I'm going to write plus, and then instead keep the minus in front of the sign, you'll see. Um, y, so minus sine um, x, uh, and then uh, divided by cosine squared x, right? Okay, um, divided by um, cosine squared x, and then of course dx, right? Okay, cool. First, notice that this here is secant squared x, right? Um, so we just have that the first integral is the integral of secant squared x, how convenient because we know the derivative of tangent is secant squared x so we know that this integral this integral here is just tan x right okay cool 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 and then plus in the second integral we see that we can do u substitution um, and um, that's because like uh, in the denominator we have cosine squared x which is same as cosine x all squared and in the numerator we have um, negative sine x and how lucky are we right like because uh, if we let cosine um, x equal u then du would have to equal negative sine x uh, dx and in the numerator we have du and now you see why I kept the negative sign with this the negative sign with the sign sorry that sounded like I was saying something wrong anyway 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 that's right right so this whole thing that I circled here is equal to du and the denominator is just u squared. Okay, um, nice. So we could just write uh, du divided by u squared. Okay, and that's much easier to integrate for us, right? Okay, cool. Um, so du divided by u squared, right? Okay, cool. And notice that like I probably want to use the power rule to find the antiderivative here. So I want to write this in the numerator. 
and we could do that if we just write um, u to the negative 2, right? u to the negative 2. Ugh, I don't like that u. Okay, u to the negative 2, that's better. And then du. Yeah, okay, cool. So as we said, this integral is just um, tan x, so tan x, and then uh, now plus the antiderivative of this. Well, first, if we use the power rule, we're going to say u to the negative 1. Um, so u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, right? And that's just, uh, this is just negative 1 over u, right? So I'll prefer that, which means I got to replace this plus sign with a minus sign. So minus 1 over u. That's what we've got. And then, of course, plus c. Notice we've got a plus c from here, another plus c from there. Well, there are two different constants possibly, but we're going to lump them into 1 plus c. Yeah, okay. I just assumed that you understood that without me saying it. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, u was cosine, so we could just, instead of 1 over u, we could write 1 over cosine x, and then, of course, plus c to conclude. And we have an interpretation for that, right? It's secant x. So we just go, this is equal to tan x um, minus sec x um, plus c. And that is it. Yeah? Cool. Keep watching.